Holy smokes, this thing just held on. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Once I heard the tires start to squeal, I thought I was gonna have to slow down just a little bit, but it still just clawed right on. Holy smokes, this is a lot of fun. If you'll allow me to be just a little bit self-indulgent, when I was younger, I was kind of this artsy dork and I fancied myself to be something of a poet and I loved putting words together and see how they fit. And one of my favorite words, automotively speaking at least, is Maserati. Yet in spite of that, I've never been a huge fan of most of Maserati's products, at least in the modern era. That said, I have been interested in the renaissance that seems to be going on in Modena, Italy, with the likes of the MC20 supercar, the Gran Turismo, and the company's first all-electric offering, the Gran Turismo Fulgore. Maserati seems to be on a tear, bringing out some cool new products. And among them is this, the Gricale Small Crossover. The Gricale is Maserati's answer to the Porsche Macan, and it looks pretty interesting to me, especially when you consider that the Trofeo model's twin-turbocharged 3.0-liter V6 is derived from the same unit found in the MC20 supercar. I'm about to go for a spin in the Gricale, and it's going to be my first time really pushing it with any kind of verve, so you're going to be getting my reactions right as soon as they come. Now. Cue the Trident trombones. The first thing that's obvious about the Gricale is this supercar-derived soundtrack coming from the 3.0-liter twin-turbo under the hood. That throaty burble obviously comes from something like the MC20, and it makes its parentage plainly apparent the moment you leave the driveway. Now, one thing I can definitely tell is that the throttle feels just a little bit flat-footed and not super exciting, and that's because it's in the default GT drive mode, which theoretically splits the difference between comfort and sport. However, I think it's definitely skewed pretty far toward comfort. It just doesn't feel terribly inspiring. But if you just twist this little knob right here on the steering wheel, you get over into sport mode. Let's see how it does. Oh, wow. <sighs> Instantly, oh my gosh. The throttle just becomes a lot sharper and more enjoyable to drive. And you can definitely tell there's a little bit more volume coming from the tailpipes. It's just obviously, a much more exciting experience being in sport mode. That said, I think it's great that Maserati gives the Gricale that dual purpose nature with all of these changes happening just at the flick of a little switch right here on the steering wheel. Beyond the drive mode software, there's also a lot of hardware at work making the Gricale do the things that it can do. I already mentioned that three liter twin turbocharged V6 up front and it makes 523 horsepower and 457 pound feet. It sends power to all four wheels via an eight-speed traditional automatic transmission. The Gricale Trofeo also comes standard with a four-corner air suspension that admittedly does feel a little bit floaty when you're in the comfort mode, but once you get it over into sport, it definitely feels a lot more connected to the road. I'm not gonna say it's quite as composed and impressive as the air suspension systems that we've come to expect from Porsche, but it's still pretty darn good. The other great thing about this car, <laughs> when, you're, when you're pushing it as hard as I am right now, is that you get some great chunky shift paddles that are mounted to the column rather than to the wheel. So that means that when you're encountering a high G corner like this, you can still catch a paddle because you know exactly where it's gonna be at all times. The last time I drove a Maserati, I was going to the Trofeo launch program for the Ghibli, the Levante, and the Quattroporte. These three cars were the first modern Trofeo models to rejoin the Maserati family, and they came with a Ferrari-derived V8. I think it was 4.7 liters, but if I'm wrong, I'm sure someone in the comments is gonna let me know. So you've got a Ferrari-engined four-door sedan and five-door SUV. You'd expect them to be pretty thrilling, right? and they just weren't. There just wasn't a whole lot of excitement to be had. The soundtrack wasn't even that good. That's why I approached the Gricale Trofeo with a little bit of skepticism. I wasn't really planning on liking it that much, but as you just saw, this SUV is a whole lot of fun to drive quickly. In spite of the fact that it has a theoretically inferior three liter V6 under the hood, there's a lot of feedback that you get from that engine. It sounds absolutely brilliant. It's so exciting to drive. But then there's also a lot of communication that comes through the steering wheel and the suspension. In fact, the steering wheel is almost too talkative. I'm getting a fair amount of bump steer and I can feel a lot of the pavement's irregularities and surfaces making their way through the rim. 
I'm honestly pretty surprised that Maserati allowed something this chatty to make it through to the cans of well-heeled luxury customers who are gonna spend upwards of $110,000 on this thing. And I'm really glad they did because this is exactly how a performance SUV should feel. Taking things down just a little bit, I'm gonna swap it back into GT mode. I'm gonna put the transmission back into full automatic and leave the paddle shifters alone. The thing quiets down. The air suspension smooths out all of those bumps that were making their way right to my backside a few seconds ago. <laughs> Dual purpose, man, it's kind of amazing. Now that we're slowing down just a little bit, I can tell you about some of the other particulars for the Grucale, and unfortunately, this is where it starts to fall apart. On paper, it sounds pretty impressive. There's a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, a 12.3 inch center infotainment display, and a second 8.8 .8 inch comfort display mounted below the infotainment. This comfort display, though, is kind of terrible. It handles everything from seat heating and climate controls to headlights and ambient lighting and the suspension's ride height. And that would all be well and good if that was plainly obvious, but it just isn't. The headlights are mounted down here in this tiny little corner surrounded by a bunch of climate controls so you don't know to look for them when you start the car at night and your headlights don't come on. Furthermore, the dash illumination isn't located within the headlights like you'd expect if the car had a traditional knob or switch. Instead, it's located in ambient lighting, which is a gigantic pain in the butt to find when you're driving down the road and being blinded by your own touchscreen display. Most customers will figure out this car within the first week or two of owning it, so I probably shouldn't harp on that too much, but it does kind of just underscore this ever so slightly backwards approach that Italian brands have to ergonomics. Other than that, the technology suite is perfectly adequate. The center screen uses Uconnect, which is obviously borrowed from the parent company Stellantis, and it works pretty well. You do kind of have to push the screen pretty hard in order to make your inputs known, and I think that might be a hardware issue more than a software issue, because otherwise Uconnect generally works fine. There's also wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, so you can use all of your smartphone apps very, very easily. One cool feature that I absolutely love is the digital analog clock. Now, as you probably know, Maseratis always have a center-mounted analog clock, and this one is no different, but in this case, the face is actually digital, which I didn't even notice until I realized there was a clock adjustment setting in this lower touchscreen display. You can switch between a classic, a sport, or a very modern design watch face, or you can switch to a compass, a G meter when you're pushing really hard and you wanna see how fast you're going, or pedal applications. So there's a ton of information that you can get from this little thing. One thing that Maserati tends to do well is interior quality, and the Grucale upholds family tradition very, very nicely. The Trofeo that I'm sitting in has this beautiful carbon fiber weave on the center console and the door panels. And as you can maybe see, it looks like it might even be unfinished, which gives it a really lovely tactile impression. It's not that high gloss that you'd find on lots of other sports cars nowadays. The speaker grills are hewn out of a single piece of metal, so they have this icy cold razor blade feel to them. And the other materials inside the cabin are pretty well done. There's just one or two exceptions. There's a lot of hard plastic in the door pockets, and you can definitely tell when you've got a bottle in there kind of just clanging around. And then there's some hard plastic on the door pull right here. But by and large, most of the materials are very nice and totally appropriate for this class of car. It's also pretty comfortable. The seats offer adjustable bolsters. You do have to go into this annoying comfort display to get to them, but once you're there, you can get the car to hug you tight for a curvy road or to kind of let out a little bit in the middle so that you can relax on a long drive. Now, as you can maybe tell by the steering wheel movements, I'm about to get back into the canyons, so I'm gonna tune this thing up to sport again, and I'll see you on the other side. We can talk a little bit about how the thing looks. Now that I'm done having fun behind the wheel, I just wanna take a quick moment and talk about the way that the Grucale Trofeo looks. Now, as you can see, the proportions are pretty similar to the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, and that could be because they're both based on the Giorgio platform. Step away from that though, and this car has a personality all its own. The big mouth front grille is shared with decades and decades of Maserati history, as is that C-pillar mounted Trident logo. You also get these really sleek portholes right here and the Trofeo script is cribbed right from the company's history as well. My favorite nod to the past, however, has to be the boomerang shape of the taillights, which is inspired by the Giugiaro designed 3200 GT from the late 1990s. Overall, the Grucale is a really fun canvas for these classic Maserati design cues. It doesn't have quite the same classic proportions as the long hood Levante SUV, but it still has plenty of personality and looks like a ton of 
Potter. If you're wondering how much all of this Italianate flair is going to cost you, the standard Maserati Grecale starts at $68,500 plus destination, which gets you a 300 horsepower, two liter mild hybrid turbocharged four cylinder. However, if you want the full fat Maserati Grecale Trofeo, plan on spending at least $105,500. And on top of that very heady base price, this car costs $29,800 extra for a total price of $135,300. The lion's share of that optional upgrade is this incredible coat of Giallo Corse paint. It costs $19,000. If you can do without it, which I highly suggest you try getting your mind around, you will be spending a lot less money for a Grecale. But at the same time, a Porsche Macan GTS is a lot less. Of course, you don't have quite as much power, but you do get a very composed and sporty driving experience. And I think that might be the one that I would buy if I were shopping in this segment of vehicle. But if you have to have the absolute most in technology, power, performance, and brand cachet, the Maserati Grecale Trofeo is a phenomenal performer, and it's definitely made me a believer in that lyrical name once again. Thanks for watching. Thank you.